This is the Mendelian inheritance genetics tutorial presented by the SHLD we reference ABC of Clinical Genetics by Alien Greenstone. <coughs> so here we are going to study um, Mendelian inheritance. So we need to know that what the original principle of Mendel inheritance. So we have gene um, common so 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 what are the principles of Mendel? So we need to know that generally uh, Mendel has two theorems. The first theorem is uh, that is what I'm going to explain now. Is that genes come in pair and one inherit from each parent. So that's the first thing you have to know. Second is individual genes have different alleles which can act in a dominant or recessive fashion. The third still inside the, the first theorem is during meiosis segregation of allele occurs so, so that each gamete receives only one allele. And the last one is allele at different locales segregate independently. So these are the four um, the four principles which are used in the first Mendel theorem. Is it clear? So <clears throat> now um, so this is a principle of segregation. Why the second Mendel theorem that I'm going to study we are not going to speak here is going to be the principle of assortment. <laughs> Now, um, we need to know that what since we have spoken about that the allele can either be expressed as autosomal dominant or it can be expressed as dominant or recessive version, we need to know that there is what is called autosomal dominant inheritance. <laughs> so, the first thing is that I'm going to define the term autosomal. Autosomal just means that it is the it is constituting of the 22 pair set of chromosomes. When I say autosomal, is the 22 pair set of chromosomes and the 22 pair set of chromosomes are involved with the production of the somatic part of the body, the human body. So all the cells that constitute the phenotype of the human body are the autosomes. Why sexual is due to the 23rd pair of chromosomes. So when the 23rd pair of chromosomes is X and why so those are the the the, the sexual chromosomes so when i say sexual inheritance i'm speaking about the twisted pair of chromosomes when i say autosomal inheritance i'm speaking about the first 22 pairs of chromosomes <coughs> so now dominant so you need to know that what alleles are in pair to produce a particular gene example you have an allele for albinism the allele for albinism which um, which is going to be um, is going to to produce the albinism disease is going to usually be recessive, is it clear? So it is recessive, and we have an, a dominant allele which is non albinism, is it clear? And when you have an allele of a dominant allele of non albinism with an a recessive allele of albinism, you see that what the gene of albinism is not going to be expressed. So that is what you have to know. So we have allele exists in pair, and in that pair, one can be dominant, one can be recessive, and and sometimes both of them can be uh, um, um, expressed at the same time. One can be dominant, one can be recessive, and sometimes both of them can be co-dominant. They can dominate at the same time. Example, you see <coughs> skin color in Metis, Metis children. Is it clear? You realize that the skin color in Metis children is a fusion of both um, the allele from the male black um, parent and the allele from a female white parent. Is it clear? So you see that the skin color in Metis is co-dominant because it's a fusion between both of them. Is it clear? <coughs> So those are the, the different things that you have to do. But generally, we are going to just see dominant and recessive here. So we start with the autosomal dominant inheritance. So for autosomal dominant inheritance, um, so you need to know that it exists both in males and females in the same proportion. So that's it. So you have late onset disorder. So in certain cases of autosomal dominant disorder, disorder inheritance may occur late in life. So when you are in child childhood, you may not say that the patient is not having the disease until the patient attains a certain age before you see that the patient does not have the disease. 
Now we have certain definition inside autosomal dominant. We have what is called variable expressivity, expressivity or variability, and we have what is called penetrance. Now variability is just defined as <clears throat> so you need to know that what in some disorder variability is due to instability of the underlying mutation so let me just define variability variability just means that what you have the autosomal dominant chromo the autosomal dominant gene in you but their expression the degree of expression vary from person to person is it clear so it is the degree, the, the, the variation in variation variability is actually the variation in the degree of expression of a um, of a genetic disease from person to person who have the same um, 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 autosomal dominant gene. Is it clear? clear? You have the same autosomal dominant gene, but in certain people is going to be expressed low and in other people is going to be expressed very highly so example of variation can occur in disease with autosomal dominant disease like tuberous sclerosis and tuberous sclerosis um, also demonstrate pleiotropy so pleiotropy is still the same as vari variability means that we're resulting in a variability of apparently you have unrelated phenotypic features Example: Some people are going to have in in, in, in tuberous sclerosis. You have pleiotropy. You have pleiotropy means that you have uh, um, um, different features. The features are variable. Some people may have a very um, severe disease, while other may have very unsevere disease. So, so very simple diseases, and they have they exist in pleiotropism. They exist with um, features which are unrelated to the condition. So example, tuberous sclerosis, some people may have skin hypopigmentation, as you can see here, a leaf depigmentation of the is the as the only sign of tuberous sclerosis in some patient. Some patients may have multiple hematomas. Some patients may even go up to learning disability and mental retardation with tuberous sclerosis. Is it clear? So that is what is called variability. The, it's, it's a, the, the different degree of expression of a particular disease. Um, genetic disease why all of them have the same autosomal dominant inheritance now um penetra penetrance is that one it is a skip of the disease within generation so it is lack of expression the total lack of expression of a disease in certain population um within generation mean that one means that certain people can have the autosomal dominant gene in themselves but they do not completely express that autosomal dominant gene as you can see now um <clears throat> this is an example of autosomal dominant it's a pdg of autosomal dominant disease so the pdg of autosomal dominant disease shows that one when one parent has the autosomal dominant disease <clears throat> so this is the this is autosomal dominant allele. let's say that this parent is affected it is usually in autosomal dominant disease the egg the, the, the children who are homozygous pair it is incompatible with life so when you have autosomal dominant disease usually when you are a homozygous pair you are incompatible with life so the parents who are who are affected are usually heterozygous so you see most of the children are going to be affected so so you see most of the children of the parents that have it are going to be affected you can think of autosomal dominant disease because this is how it's going to be expressed so a so these children are going to be affected and these are the only offspring that are going to be affected probably for you to be affected to have the gene is going to be half and the probability for you to be having the phenotypic disease is going to be one is it clear except there is a different variability of penetrance so these are the different so the penetrance so as you can see you, you may have a penetrance um, of zero in cases of you have a you have a high penetrance in cases of retinal blastoma example you have also autosclerosis and you have hereditary pancreatitis so in retinal blastoma so all this is order so in certain cases you see that certain population have the gene of retinal blastoma but they are not affected with retinal blastoma 
is it clear certain population have the gene of autosclerosis and energy to pancreatitis but they are not affected why others have that same gene and they are extremely affected that is because of penetration it's different from variability where you express the disease in different degrees so one degree is severe and other people it is unsevere is it clear <clears throat> So um, the next one is example of autosomal dominant disorder. So as you can see, we have the first one called achondroplasia, which is which is mostly due to increased by, by paternal age achondroplasia. We have acute intermittent porphyria. We have charcot marito disease. We have fascio um, scapulohumeral dystrophy. Familial adenomatous polyposis. Familial breast cancer familial hypercholesterolemia, Hodgkin disease and all that. So all these are autosomal dominant disease, neurofibromatosis, osteogenesis imperfecta and all that, <coughs> tuberosclerosis. Now also certain cases of Mendel's inheritance, you have new mutation. So new mutation may account of the presence of a dominant disorder in a, pe in a person who does not have any family issue. You see a child uh, having an autosomal dominant a patient and a child having autosomal dominant disorder, but the parents never have it because of a new mutation either in the parents or in the child. So a very good example for that is a condo is echondoplasia. This causes no problem in conditions just echondoplasia that show little variability but can be more difficult in many other conditions such as neurofibromatosis and so like you said the year is they are just trying to explain that echondoplasia had to not have a high variability so when you have a gene of echondoplasia you must express echondoplasia but in other other disease like tuberosclerosis since there is a very high variability you may not you may not know um that so you may not know that the patient had a mutation before if the patient was expressing the, the low degree of the disease like in the case of tuberosclerosis so these are um, new mutation may occur in disease such as echondroplasia like you need to know that what when the paternal age is very high let's say a normal phenotypic father with a high paternal age of greater than 40 to 45 years you see that the children are going to express echondroplasia is it clear because when you are, you are growing older there is your division micro division on your or on your um, or your chromosomes which may make you transfer a gene of echondroplasia to your child also you have new mutation occurring in case of neurofibromatosis in case of tuberosclerosis so all that occur now the next one is homozygosity so homozygosity for dominant gene is uncommon so it means that what means that um, is uncommon occurring only when two people with the same disorder have children together so usually it is uncommon to have homozygous children so this may happen preferentially with certain conditions like echondroplasia you may have homozygosity echondroplasia but usually when there is homozygosity it is incompatible with life like homozygous echondroplasia is lethal condition and the risk of offspring to of the two affected parents affected is going to be 25 percent now the next one um, disease is going to be autosomal recessive inheritance so in autosomal recessive inheritance here actually we have now a new term which is a carrier and affected affected you have a, a phenotypic effect so so you have the gene in your cell and you are affected phenotypically why carrier you have a gene but you are not affected phenotypically you are phenotypically normal so that is what is a carrier as you can see you have carrier carrier you may not see so you see that in autosomal recessive disease you see that you do two generations so this is the first degree family issue here and this it is only as from the third degree family issue that you visualize the disease so it is you may not see the disease very commonly in the family it is uncommon is it clear it is very uncommon to have the um, the disease in the family so that is auto usual that's the PTV pattern of autosomal recessive inheritance <clears throat> so this is how the Mendelian um, the principle of segregation of autosomal recessive inheritance two parents are carrier and then um, probability to produce children 
who are who are not having who are carriers the probability for you to produce children who are carriers is going to be two third so so because three of them are going to be normal and two of them may be carrier and the probability for you to for it to for them to be affected is going to be one okay. and the next one is <coughs> common recessive genes so then now what are the common recessive genes so i'm not going to speak about that so but we are, i'm just going to speak about the so you need to also know that there may exist variability in autosomal recessive condition you may also have a uh, new mutation autosomal recessive co um, condition and you also have uniparental disomy autosomal recessive condition Exactly, and you need to know that what uniparental disomy is just a disorder. So when I say uniparental disomy, it's just a disorder which is due to which is transferred in the gene of the grandparent. Exactly. So it is a, 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 a genetic disorder which is transferred from the chromosomes of the grandparents. I'm not. I'm going to explain that later. <laughs> So these are examples of autosomal recessive disorders. You have congenital adrenal hyperplasia, cystic fibrosis, deafness in some forms, Friedreich ataxia, galactosemia, hemochromatosis, homocystinuria, and you can see the rest. Like in our context, you have sickle cell disease. And although other autosomal we have albinism in our context. So those are the different things to visualize. <coughs> Now, heterogeneity, Gen genetic heterogeneity, heterogeneity is common and involves multiple alleles at a single. <coughs> so, when you have two main types of heterogeneity, we have genetic heterogeneity and we have um, phenotype and locus heterogeneity. So, genetic heterogeneity is common and involves multiple alleles. So, we have multiple alleles at a single locus. Is it clear? So, we have multiple alleles at a single locus. So, many alleles can help you to identify a particular gene. That is genetic heterogeneity. Now, in locus heterogeneity, what happens is that we have one gene is going to be due to alleles which have put, uh, which have located in multiple loci is it clear so that is the um, locus um heterogeneity so the difference between genetic heterogeneity which means that what on one locus there are many alleles that can help you to identify a particular gene example the gene of dullness you may have multiple genes um, on one multiple allele on one ruler at that on one locus identify that particular gene of tallness. But example in cases of sensorineural deafness, um, you have multiple alleles on different loci, on different locations, different chromosomes, different location which identify that particular gene for sensorineural deafness. <coughs> So that is the case. So the next one now is consanguinity. Consanguinity, if you have always defined, is just the act of having a um, uh, uh, children with your relationship. So that's it. So what is the characteristic of autosomal recessive inheritance? Usually, in autosomal recessive inheritance, the male and the female are equally affected. Both parents are usually unaffected carriers. So they are carriers and they are unaffected. Two out of three unaffected siblings are going to be carriers. Two out of three. So the probability for you to be a carrier is not half. Is it clear? The probability for you to be a carrier, it is only in high school that you were taught that the probability for you to be a carrier is half. No. Actually, the probability for you to be a carrier is not half. The probability for you to be a car is to third, meaning that what it means that you are a carrier, but um, 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 three of the children are going to be produced are going to be normal phenotypes. Is it clear? Of those three who are going to be normal phenotypes, two of them are going to be carrier. That's why it is to third. It is not half because. Um, in, in high school, we thought that the probability for you to be a carrier is half. That is two two over four so because we're considering the affected child but it's not possible that you are a carrier if you are affected 
is it clear? So when you are affected, you are immediately affected. You are no more a carrier. So the probability for you to be a carrier is not half. But it's going to be two thirds because you are considering only the children who are phenotypically normal. Two in three children who are phenotypically normal are going to be carriers. <laughs> And then the next one, you have increased incidence of parental consanguinity is rare, which is other. So, so, so if you have parental consanguinity, you're going to increase the risk of autosomal recessive condition. Now, the next one is X-linked recessive condition. So, it is just a recessive condition as should it be the the X chromosomes. So, this is the pattern of X-linked recessive condition. You have a carrier female who is going to transfer it to all their male children so if you have a carrier female and transferring to all their male children so that is an excellent recessive condition so you have usually so the females men are not affected in the family with that condition it's only the males 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 who are affected in the family so that you think of it so this is a normal female and male relationship so usually the male are affected half of the males are affected when one mother female is, is a carrier is it clear so half of the males are affected and half of the females are going to be carriers <coughs> So now detecting carriers. So how do you detect carriers? Recognizing the excellent recessive inheritance is important because many women in the family may be at the risk of being carriers and having affected sons. So irrespective of whom they marry. So so now um so so those are the cases in detecting car. I'm not going to speak about that more. But you need to know that usually when you have a an X link disease or in males, is it clear? Usually um, all their females are going to when the males have X link disease, all the females are going to be carriers. So what are the characteristics of X link recessive disease? You see males are affected almost exclusively. That's the first thing. Second is transmission through the female carrier. Third is um, male to male to male transmission does not occur and all the daughters of the affected males are going to be carrier. So what are the examples of X link recessive disorders? You have anhidrotic ectoderma dysplasia, we have Becker muscular dystrophy, we have Duchenne muscular dystrophy, we have Corioid deremia, color blindness, um, we have Fabry's disease, Fragile X syndrome, G6 species deficiency, hemophilia A and B, Hunter syndrome, histocytosis, and all these. So these are all the diseases um, which are X-linked recessive condition. <clears throat> Now, x link dominant condition. So, this is a P degree of x link dominant condition. In x link dominant condition, all the mother, the mother are going to transmit most of to their children. So, and all the father will transmit the disease to their um, their females, so their female children. So, that is x link dominant condition. So, example of x link dominant condition, we have focal dermal hypoplasia, which is also called gold syndrome we have incontinentia pigmenti so those are certain cases of um, this now in certain um, focal um, there are certain cases of um, x-linked dominant disorder which are later so in x-linked dominant disorder which are later so you see that you see that immediately so when you have a there are certain x-linked dominant disorder which are uh, which are later is it clear so in this uh, x-linked dominant disorder which are later you see that what when you have only one x chromosome all the males of that family are going to die immediately they have the disease is it clear so you realize that all the males of that family will die immediately they have the disease that is there are certain x-linked dominant disorder which are later like that why in females females are not going to die even though they have the disease because you know that in female we have what is called the uh the the, the methylation of the one x chromosome so there are certain x chromosomes that are going to be expressed why the um the the later chromosomes may not be expressed in certain cells so the female may be alive without any problem is it clear <coughs> Now, we have also Y-link inheritance. So in Y-link inheritance, so only the males have it. So if you have Y-link inheritance, only the males that have it. 
So his son so they are going to transfer to the son like the, the gene of the the bar the, the bar head is also transferred inside the Y linked chromosome. So Y is Y chromosome. So that's it. Pathogenesis all that. So um, the next thing that you're going to visualize is on her, um, unusual inheritance method.